Hey, what is algebra? Well, one of the things we often do in math is we take a question that's hard to answer and we ask a similar question. And then maybe in answering that question, we can answer our original question. So what's biology? Well, biology is a class you take at school, but it's also a branch of science. It's the study of all living things. Algebra one, similarly, it is a class you take in school, but it's also a branch of mathematics. But what's math? Well, well, simply put, math makes abstractions of relationships. It explores relationships between different things, and then we can apply those relationships that we discover through the math to answer questions. So what algebra means, technically, is to restore or make whole again. It's to take something that's incomplete and make it, well, complete. It is a branch of math, and that's the math that's being done. It takes something you don't know, and it figures out what it is. Now, the biggest idea in algebra is to maintain equality. See the equal sign right here in the middle of the dollar bill and the pennies? That means that each side is the same. 100 pennies is equal to $1. Everything in algebra must respect that equality. We always have to keep one side equal to the other. It's the big idea. Now, suppose that our collection of pennies was missing some, but we didn't know how many. You see, instead of writing out, well, how many pennies are missing so that this collection of pennies on the left would be 100 pennies, which would be equal to the dollar, which is also equal to 100 pennies. We just write the letter X instead. It's a lot easier, you see? Now, a lot of people complain. They're like, wow, math was really great until you introduced the alphabet. And then it was like the work of Satan and nothing was understood. And that's really a shame because, well, it doesn't need to be that way. You see, in algebra, numbers are represented by letters. See, if we don't know what a number is equal to, we just put a letter there and that's what it is we have to figure out. It's a lot easier than writing out, well, what is this number really equal after all? Just put a letter there, it's easy. Now, in case you don't believe me, imagine a boy and a dog and they're walking through the park and there's a squirrel. Well, if you've seen the movie Up, you know that dogs hate squirrels, so the dog gets all bajiggity, squirms out of his collar and, well, gets away from the boy and chases the dog. What does the boy do? You don't know anything about the boy or the dog. However, you know the nature of dogs and boys, so you can make some pretty good assumptions as to what would happen next. Same exact thing happens in algebra. We don't know the number that's missing exactly, but we know about numbers and we know about operations, so it's not so bad. Now, the trickiest thing in algebra, regardless of the level, is reading it. Reading the algebra is really what unlocks it and makes it accessible or just something you have to do with all these different oh, confusing things to remember. You see this equation right here, three times X plus five equals 20. Typically, people that struggle, they don't even read it. They just look at it and think, oh, well, what do I do? And that's really a shame because the first thing you should do is you should read it. If you read it, correctly, but not so efficiently, you would say, well, 3x plus 5 equals 20. And that's too bad because, number one, it doesn't, the way that this is being read doesn't really address the nature of algebra. Algebra is really trying to figure out 3 times what plus 5 is equal to 20. And that's actually the correct way to say it. If you say 3x, well, you've kind of skipped over the whole multiplication thing. If that is 3x is 3 times x. But when you say it, it makes you think about it. It makes you recognize it. It puts it right there in the forefront of your thinking, and then it's a lot easier. Let's take a look at another example. This example right here, oh goodness gracious, that looks impossible, right? If you just read it, the square root of 25 plus x plus the square root of 7x plus x equals 5? Probably really confusing. Your chances of solving it might not be so great, but if you can read it as a question, if you can read it as algebra, the answer might just jump out at you. If you can figure it out without doing any math, leave me a comment below. I'd like to hear what you think. Now, um, not all letters in math are unknowns. For example, pi. Pi is a really good example because we know exactly what pi is. It's an irrational number. You can't really write it out. You can only approximate it. So we use the Greek letter pi to represent the number pi. No big deal. See, letters are used in math all the time. It's not a big deal. Now. Sometimes we have a variable and sometimes we have an unknown and they're a little bit different. You see, this first equation right here, 
what plus three equals eight? Well, that, that's five. It only has one answer. It's just five. There's nothing else. It's an unknown. It only has one solution. There's only one value for X that resolves this, that completes this statement, that makes this statement true. Whereas this other statement right here, this inequality, what plus three is greater than eight? Man, well, there's infinitely many answers. That's a variable. It has a lot of possibles. It has a lot of possible solutions, a lot of possible values for X that would make this true. Now, that's not a really big deal right now, but it's going to come into play later. Now, there are other types of variables too. There's things called dependent and independent. Like this one right here says one number plus another number equals eight. Now, they could be equal to each other, but they don't necessarily have to be equal, equal to each other. It doesn't say X plus X. It says X plus Y. So maybe they're both four. Maybe it's seven and one. Maybe Y is one and X is seven, or maybe X is one and y is seven. We don't really know. There's infinitely many answers to this kind of equation right here. And you see x is what we call independent and y is what we call dependent. And since there's so many answers, we actually write them in what's called an ordered pair. Ordered because they go alphabetically and x comes before y in the alphabet and pair because there's two. So we just write parentheses with a comma in the middle separating the two numbers. Now again, this isn't such a huge deal for right now. I just want to introduce something that is going to come up in the very near future. Now in this algebra unit, what we're going to learn is all of the foundational things that you need, well, for algebra. Now all through high school, you're going to be using algebra extensively. Even in geometry and trigonometry, you still will be using a lot of algebra. So even if you don't want to be an engineer or a scientist or a mathematician, you still have to graduate from high school and there's a good chance you're going to end up going into college and algebra is foundational. If you understand these basics of algebra that we're going to start covering next, then math won't be so difficult for you. So anyway, we're going to be doing all kinds of stuff with basic algebra right now. We're going to be solving rational equations. We're going to be doing inequalities. We're going to introduce the idea of what a graph is, variation, and all kinds of fancy fun stuff. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful. It's just to introduce the idea of what algebra is to you. If it is helpful, you can help me out. Just click like, visit my website, beardedmathman.com. We're on Twitter. And well, I'd like to thank you for watching. Now, if you don't know, I'm on a mission. You see, kids are graduating from high school, going into college, having to take tons of remedial math classes. And I think that is, well, without trying to be dramatic about it, it's really tragic. It's nonsensical. There's no reason for that to be happening. You see, math has become a burden. It's become a barricade between young people and their dreams. And I want to change that. I, I want math to not be in the way. I want it to be a platform upon which students can promote their own success. Now, how I plan on doing that is covering all of math that's typically taught in high school in a way that not only gets you, the student, through today and tomorrow and next week's test, but does it in a way that you will have a solid foundation upon which the math you're going to be taking next year and three years and six years from now will make sense and will be easy. And that's true for everybody, whether or not you're going to be an engineer, scientist, mathematician, artist, musician, dancer, whatever. If you plan on going to college, I want to help you so that math will be easier for you. If you think this is a worthwhile endeavor, you could visit my website. I'll put some links in the bottom. You could visit my Patreon page. If anything that you buy, for example, from Amazon through my website it doesn't cost you a single penny more, and it really helps me out. It helps me to make all of these videos and all the materials I'm putting together on my website, beardedmathman.com. So anyway, I'd like to thank you again for your time, and uh, have a great day.